that direction this morning. What you hold dear and protect and think about most is what you treasure in your life. For some of us, our box may be filled with a hobby or knowledge. Something we like to do, books we like to read, places we like to go just to have a hobby and to have some fun. For others, it might be money is what you treasure. You think about how to make more money. You think about how to get ahead at work. You think about what am I going to do to protect my position so that I can make more money. Some treasure their health. You want to make sure that you're getting the right vitamins, the right medicine. You want to make sure that your health is the best it can be. And understand, I'm not saying any of these things are wrong. But it might be something you treasure. Could be possessions. Could be something that you have. It could be a house. It could be a car. It could be a computer. It could be a video game. It could be a girlfriend or a boyfriend. But it's a, something you have in your life that you can hold on to. It could be food. You might treasure food. This is a chocolate bar loaded with sugar. You know who does not treasure this? Those of you who have diabetes. Maybe, maybe it's your family. Maybe you treasure your family and you think the world of them and they are so important to you and they are some, something you want to protect and you want to look after. Again, none of this in itself is bad. But maybe you, you treasure sports like football. Maybe you treasure the very last gift my dad ever gave me. It's never been used. It will never have grease put on it. Because I treasure that. I opened this present on a Christmas morning after he had passed away because he had bought that for me. Treasures. Things that we value, things that we hold dear, things that we hold closely and we protect. Worldly people think primarily of fame and financial success and accomplishments and valuable possessions. What do you hold dear? What do you protect? What do you hold close to you? What do you think about when you get up in the morning? What do you think about when you go to bed? People reveal what they treasure by their actions and their words. Did you hear me, church? People reveal what they treasure by their actions and their words. If it's their power and their position, you can rest assured their actions and words will destroy you to protect themselves. If they treasure the value of other people, they will be building others up around them. What do you treasure? A person with a heart set on worldly pleasures and riches will live in a pursuit of earthly treasures that will soon pass away. That the joy and the satisfaction of those treasures can go away in a fleeting moment. But for those who seek a treasure that's not of this world, it is those that will find joy in the midst of turmoil. Peace in the midst of chaos. This morning we're, we are in Luke chapter 6. I'm going to be very honest with you, I have written three different sermons out of this chapter this week. The one I'm preaching to you came about 4 o'clock this morning. About 2 o'clock last night, I got on, my, got on my knees and started praying. Lord, I just don't, I don't have that satisfaction about what I have. 
Yes, I did fall asleep while I was praying. I just want y'all to know. But God woke me up, and these three verses, I couldn't get them off my heart. So we're going to dive in this morning to Luke chapter 6, verses 44, 43, 44, and 45. While you're turning there, I want to remind you what one famous man said. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That man was Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 6. And what is deemed as the Sermon on the Mount. A little tidbit of what we're reading here in Luke chapter 6. This seems to be the Sermon on the Mount, or at least the same content, but when you look at the, the context of it, they're not on a mountain. They're in a plain where they're all on level ground. Luke is letting us know this isn't the same place that Matthew wrote about. Why is Jesus going over the same stuff again? You want to know why? Because we're hard-headed people. His disciples needed to hear it again and again and again and again because we sometimes won't get it the first time we hear it. Wouldn't it be great if we could be told something one time and we'd understand it and get it and be able to move on? We could graduate in six years in school. But instead, we got to go over things over and over because what we get leaks, and when it leaks out, something replaces it, and it's usually of the flesh and not the spirit. So what is a treasure? Let's kind of give some, some substance to this. What is a treasure we're talking about? Here's how I would like to move forward with this idea of treasure. It has great value to the one who is seeking it or the one that possesses it. Do you hear me? We want to be on the same page here. It has great value. It has great worth for the one who's seeking it or the one that possesses it. So you can absolutely include the values that make up your character. For the things that you value are a treasure. And those treasures will birth a character. And that character will birth an action. And that action will either glorify God or glorify yourself. So today, this sermon, even though I'm going to talk about some things we say and some things that we do, this isn't about what you say and do, it's about what you treasure in your heart. For that's where it begins. If you know someone in your life that seems to spew hatred or, or dis, discord or anger, or they just seem to be, when you're around them, all they know what to do is just complain. It's because of what they treasure. If you know people in your life that when you're around them, all they do is lift up and they pour into other people, it's because of what they treasure. It's because of the treasure that's down deep inside their heart. Today, I'm not sure uh, where this will land with you, but how does what I value impact my life? What can I tell about those that are around me when it comes to this idea of treasure? Judy Garland, anybody know who she is? Yeah. Wizard of Oz. Didn't she play in the Wizard of Oz, Julie Garland? She said this, The greatest treasures are those invisible to the eye, but found by the heart. That's where your treasures lie that will affect what you say and what you do in this life. How you live it. And there is a great battle raging inside of you, ladies and gentlemen. There is a battle that is going on between the flesh and the spirit. And it is over the treasure, what you're going to deem important in your life. The flesh wants you to really hold on to the opinions of other people and be popular and get all the likes you can, even if you have to like your own self. I, I hear there's even people who, that will make fake Facebook and Instagram uh, accounts just so they can like their stuff to boost their likes. Come on, really? There's more in life than just a like. Because I can tell you value 
is much greater in Christ. That treasure He gives you, that treasure we have in Him, is much greater than the likes you can get from a million people online because you say the wrong thing and a million of them will dislike you. And then your value drops. I'm here today to talk about this idea of treasure because there is a battle raging within us. A battle that is grasping for treasures in our life and valuable stuff and things that is important. And here's what I want you to get today. What you treasure will determine the allegiance of your heart. Did you hear me? This isn't in your notes. You may want to write it down though. This is just so good. What you treasure will determine the allegiance of your heart. If you treasure the things of the flesh, your allegiance will be to the flesh. If you treasure the things of the Spirit, your heart will be allegiant to the spiritual things. But this is in your notes, and you can write this down. What we treasure will be the measure of who we are. What we treasure will be the measure of who we are. We can find this in Luke chapter 6. I'm going to begin in verse 43. For there is no good tree which produces bad fruit. Nor, on the other hand, a bad tree which produces good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor they, do they pick grapes from a briar bush. The good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth what is good. And the evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth what is evil. For his mouth speaks from that which fills his hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, what comes out of our mouth and what comes out of our actions is not measured on the time that we spend in church. It's not measured by the time we spend in the Word. It is measured by what is in our heart. For we can do those things simply to check off a list and to say, hey, look what I have done this day. I have I have done what I needed to do. I have done my task. But down deep in our heart, our allegiance is to our flesh and to the ways of this world. I want to bring your attention to this. What a person values and loves the most in their life will influence how they live. And we see this in the two trees that Jesus talks about. Verse 43, For there is no good tree which produces bad fruit, nor on the other hand, a bad tree which produces good fruit. In other words, what is on the inside is going to come out. When you've got a tree that's rotten inside or a tree that's messed up and the nutrients is bad or that tree is bad, you're going to see that the fruit is not going to be good. On the other hand, If you've got a good tree with good nutrients and good roots, it is going to produce good fruit. Jesus is letting us know what we treasure will be the measure of who we actually are because it's going to pour out of us. Luke 12, 34, Jesus said this, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It is what we value and treasure that will guide our heart to the allegiance of what we will pursue. Whether that be of this world and of the flesh or whether it be of God and the Spirit. A person's time, their attention, their actions, their energy, that which they focus on, whatever that is, will reveal what they treasure. What do you sacrifice your time for? Do you sacrifice your time to stay up late to binge watch something on TV? Come on now, let's just be honest and confess this morning. I'll be the first one to confess. Sometimes I just turn it on and binge it for a, a, a several hours and I'm looking going, and i got to get up when? What am I doing? That girl that got me on Criminal Minds, come on! <laughs> what we listen to. What we watch, what we spend our time with will mold us to become what we are going to become. And that can either be good 
or it can be bad. And we have to be careful that that treasure we have in our heart, that thing that we, we value, does not get out of hand and out of control. Because the things that I talked about earlier doesn't mean that they're bad. I mean, food's good. Amen? Somebody say amen. Mm-hmm. Having a pickup truck, that's good. Come on, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How about a chainsaw? Vroom, 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 vroom. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a little out of control up here. Sports. Man, I love football. You want to know my favorite player? I bet you already know. My number one player is right back there, and his name is Clyde Emery Self. Doesn't matter who he's playing for or what position he plays, man, I'm excited to see him play. I do enjoy football. By the way, my second favorite player sitting right over there, his name's Kyle Mosley. <laughs> I am so thankful that I have a family that I treasure. I'm thankful that I have a home that I can treasure and take care of. I'm thankful that God provides for me and I have things that I can treasure. And the things that we give our attention to and our energy to are things that we treasure. Think about it for a moment. The things that you prioritize, you make time for. How many people do you know blows off work all the time and keeps their job? It's because you prioritize and treasure something about having that job that causes you to get up when it's early or stay late when you got to get a job done. It's because of the values you have inside that you treasure, that you hold dear, that is precious to you. Let me tell you something else that we value. That's a treasure. The good experiences of our life and also the bad ones. Pastor, why do we treasure the bad ones? Because they make us who we are when we respond appropriately. We can be better and we can, we can have God work on our behalf in the impossible when things are going bad. But when everything is going good, God don't have to work in the impossible, does He? Because we don't need anything. But in those difficult times, God will do a work and mold and shape us. So those are treasures in our life. But I want us to take a simple look at the biblical text and see what Jesus says about how we measure our treasure. So let's look this morning in chapter 6 and see what Jesus says about measuring our treasure and what we can look at. The very first thing is this. How do I treat others? How do I treat other people? We find between verse 27 and and verse 49 of this chapter, Jesus talks a lot about how we treat other people. And he says things like, If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those who, from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners in order to receive back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For He Himself is kind to ungrateful and evil Men, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. See, how we treat other people will reveal the treasure that's in our heart because the treasure isn't really based on on other people. It's based on us being like God and treasuring Him in our heart first and foremost. Because if we treasure the God Almighty who sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross and He's our treasure, we will want to act and be like Him. It will be an outflow of what's on the inside. Our problem is we want to treasure the things that make us feel good, that make us happy. We buy into the lie that treasure should be measured by my feelings. But what makes me feel good? I'll treasure it. But what did Jesus just say? A hard truth. That we are to love the ones that don't love us. That we are to treat the sinner with love. That if they are in need, we help them. 
1 John, John had to write to the people in 1 John and say, Listen, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. I did not write that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just the deliverer of the letter. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. 1 John 4.20, you can look it up yourself. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. How we treat other people is a measure of the treasure we have in our hearts. How do you respond when people don't meet your expectations? How do you respond when things that you wanted are not there? How do you respond when someone gives you bad service? If we are children of God, when people give us bad service, we need to smile and love them back. I know some of you can completely disagree with me right now. You're going, well, if they don't, if they don't give me good service, I ain't giving them no tip. Whether I like it or not, I treasure what Jesus said over me being right and causing someone else to hurt. Those who treat us bad, we are to love. He goes on in this same, same little section. He says, don't judge and don't condemn people. Wow. Jesus in this section is really hitting hard about how you respond to others and treat other people will measure the treasure. Because that's where he brings it down into this one little section here after he talks about when you see your brother and they got a speck in their eye, you better stop and look at the log and the plank that's stuck in yours. Don't be so judgmental. Don't rush to go, look how bad they are. Because you know what we like to do? We like to co compare our Christianity to those around us and go, well, at least I'm not like that Brian fellow. Man. At least I'm going to be all right. You can't compare yourself to other people. The treasure that's in your heart has one measure, and that's Jesus Christ. To try to apply anything but that is to fall short and to absolutely take a treasure that is priceless and beautiful and just dilute it and make it a mess. So Jesus makes it very clear, how do I treat others will be a measure of the treasure that I already have in my heart. Here's another one. How I speak, what I say. Oh, come on now, Pastor. You're getting all meddling this morning. You, you, you walking into stuff you don't need to be walking in. Let me tell you, I'm just going by what it says right here in the text. Let me read to you verse 45. The good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth what is good, and the evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth what is evil. For his mouth, you know what the mouth is used to do? Speak. For his mouth speaks from that which fills his heart. And that comes on the heels of the good and the evil. You can tell the treasure of someone's heart by what comes out of their mouth. As a matter of fact, Chuck Swindoll said, If you wonder the condition of your heart, listen to your tongue. And you'll know the condition of your heart. You'll know what you treasure. You'll know what... Is important because what you say about others or to others and about yourself reveals the treasure that you have in your heart. Do you treasure what God has said and what Christ has said about you and other people, or is it more important that you convince God that you're right about all these people? I'm reminded of, of the Sons of Thunder. James and John, they were brothers, and Jesus even called them the sons of thunder, and this is why. One day, they were at, at this city in this town, and they didn't receive Jesus very well, so John looks over at Jesus and says, Hey, Jesus, how about we just call down some lightning and fire from heaven and just destroy these people and just take them out? And Jesus looked at John and said, No. 
See, in our life, how we respond, what we do, what we say is an overflow of what's inside of us. The treasure, the, the value, the treasure, the things that we hold on to that's very important. It's that which will come out when we speak. Listen, we are not looking to change how you treat people and what you say. I won't say that again. I am not here to get you to change how you treat people and what you say. I'm here to get you to answer this third question. To whom does my heart belong? Now don't rush to judgment because many of you say, Oh, my heart belongs to Jesus. Just uh, I wonder what we're going to have for lunch. I, I wonder if he's going to get us out of here so I can get to Kurt's or, or Loretta's or something. Don't rush too fast. Because that which you value and treasure is where your heart will show allegiance. Right now, this is the Word of God being proclaimed. And, and you are hearing from the Scriptures and seeing that there needs to be a measure of the treasure that's within us. Here is where the change comes in. It's not in us trying to put on a band-aid to act better or look better or speak better. It's about us changing the treasure that's inside, that which we hold dear, that will change the rest of it. I guarantee you, if you speak to many of the people in this room today, I can tell you for a fact the testimony or probably most, if not all of you, is this. When I make church important, when I go to church or I go to Bible school or Bible study, <laughs> when I do those things, my week is completely different. I've had wives tell me since my husband has been studying the Bible, he's different. I often wonder, what was he like before he started studying the Bible? I never ask that question, though. But when the priority and the treasure of knowing that this spiritual stuff, I'm going to treasure it and make it important, then all of a sudden it starts pouring out. We're not here to try to get you to talk better and act better. We're here to get Jesus on the inside more so that he pours out without even any thought in your life. It's just naturally coming out that whenever something happens, your mouth opens up and out it comes and you go, where'd that come from? Man, that must have been Jesus. Matthew 13, 44, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered it up. And then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Let me tell you, there is a lie of the evil one in this world that wants you to think that the treasures of this world is where you need to be putting your time, your talent, your energy. You need to be putting your emotion, everything into the stuff of this world. But can I tell you something? There's a greater treasure that you, you should go sell everything you have to grab a hold of it. And that is Jesus. That means lay it down, grab a hold of it, put it inside, make that the treasure that you have. And I guarantee you, God's blessing and God's power will flow out of you and people around you will be going what in the world is going on with that person and they'll be asking themselves how do I get that you talk different you walk different you're not the same person you used to be let me tell you how that happens it's not because of a three-step plan or a 12-step plan, it's because Jesus becomes the treasure in the heart of people. And when they value that and make that the priority in the main treasure above all treasures, then everything else will flow out and be beautiful and honoring to God. I have a tough question for you. Are the things important to God important to you? Or do you try to make the things that are important to you important to God? That will measure the treasure in your heart. What must I, I do? Well, someone that belongs to God, a tree that belongs to Him, that it has surrendered their life to Him, will bring forth good fruit. I know that the, the Bible says that the heart is decept, deceptive. And that at the heart of it, we're all 
born sinners. And we are going to walk that path of the flesh. And until this mortal takes on immortality, we will have this battle going on within us. But I'm here to declare to you today that there is a higher level that we can find in Christ you cannot find anywhere else. Here's the first thing that you need to do. Examine your fruit. Examine the fruit in your life, the things that you say, the things that you do. What happens when things go south? When people don't meet your expectations or something is taken away from you or, or there's things that go on that upset you. How do you respond to that? What do you say when people don't live up to your expectations? What do you say about yourself? What do you say about other people? That will reveal the treasure in your heart. Verse 43 through and 44, For there is no good tree which produces bad fruit, nor, on the other hand, a bad tree which produces good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they pick grapes from a briar bush. We cannot live our life void of the Spirit of God and expect good to come. For it is the Spirit of God residing within us that empowers us to do good. I'm telling you right now, it's only by God's grace that I've been nice to some people in my life. If it wasn't for the Holy Spirit living inside of me, they may have met their future, the graveyard or the hospital. But because of the grace of God inside of me, I've been able to... Whew. Now at times when I was younger, now we're not going to talk about that, let's move on. But the point is this. Without Jesus Christ inside of you, you cannot live up to the standard Jesus has placed before us. It takes Christ for us to fulfill what He's asked of us. And it begins by what we treasure. Do we treasure Christ above all things? Or do we treasure Netflix, Instagram, TikTok? Our hobbies, our jobs, our cars, our homes, people. Those are not bad to have in your life, but don't let them be the treasure of your life. The last thing about what, what can we do is this. It's found in Psalm chapter 139. It says these words, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. Not only do we need to really examine our own fruit, but pray that God will change us. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody in this room is perfect. If you think you're perfect, would you just raise your hand, get up, and come on down here to the altar. We need to pray for you. <laughs> None of us is perfect. In fact, we are all in the same boat. We all make mistakes. We need to grow. We need to examine the fruit in our life to see what have we started treasuring that we have put it a little too high. What in our life do we need to surrender back to the Lord? Here's something I want us to do. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. And I want you to repeat this after me. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there be any hurtful way in me. And lead me in the everlasting way. Father, today we come to you 
Lord, asking that you examine our hearts, examine our thoughts, examine the fruit of our life, so that we may determine where our treasure truly lies. Father, today may your Holy Spirit impact us in a way that we may take some things that we've put on top in our treasure box, the things that are most important and it should be second to you. Lord, help us reprioritize those things. It doesn't mean that you need to take them away and that they're not important. It just means that, God, we need to make you our treasure. Father, today I pray that your Holy Spirit will work in a mighty and powerful way to draw us closer to you so that you will be the treasure. For Lord, we know that Jesus said that out of the mouth comes what fills the heart. Lord, fill our heart with you. Fill our heart with your presence. Fill our heart with your character, your values, your thinking, so that when we are confronted in our life that we think differently than you, we value things differently than you, that we act differently than you called us to act, that you will convict us right now. Lord, I pray that you convict whoever it is that needs convicting right now, something that they're doing in their life they should not be doing, they know it's wrong. I pray that you convict them so hard that they begin to repent, Father, of whatever it is. Lord, they begin to treasure the flesh. They begin to treasure the things of this world too much. Convict them right now so that they may turn their heart and life to you so that they can find joy and peace again. Father, thank you that you've given us a treasure and that relationship with Jesus Christ. God, it's not about the task of coming to church or saying that we believe in Jesus. It's it's believing on Jesus, believing that Jesus left heaven and came to earth and lived a life and died on a cross for us so that we may be connected to you as he rose from the grave and he conquered death, hell, and the grave so that we could have that relationship with you. Father, it's not about what we do. It's about what you've already done. So right now, Father, if somebody has not made that commitment to you, may they simply ask you to forgive them and take over their life. Confess that you are Lord. Confess that you are the Savior. Father, will you do your work right now? It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.